Uncle Chant. Oh yes, Uncle Chant is right. Yes, <laughs> that is I, your host, Uncle Chant, talking head from down under, budding comic book creator and man in the middle. Before we begin, as always, consider joining the Chump Core by following and subscribing in the social links and icons you'll see throughout the episode and all that good stuff. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for asking. <laughs> no one did. No one's asking you, Chant. No one gives a shit. Uh, yeah, so let's just roll into it. We've got a fair bit to talk about today. It's very Superman related. And if that's not you, then you know where the door is. I don't really care about your attention time. <laughs> if that's not for you otherwise if you are mildly interested feel free to stick around so we've got the superman lois tv show aired this week so i've got my thoughts on that and they're rebooting superman apparently so we're going to talk about that in the movies and then we've got blue beetle that movie is happening finally this is the second time we've heard about it in recent years and hopefully it actually moves along this time and if we do have time i want to squeeze in that zack snyder's army army of the dead teaser just in case you guys have not seen it or you're not aware but first as always and forever moving on we'll be asking chant questions at the top of the show so you'd, whoever asks these questions don't need to stick around until the end <laughs> to wait they can just see their name on the screen and piss off if they like so let's just start there shall we whams ask chat and this comes all the way from merry scotland <laughs> from stewie at stewie's retro gaming uh, he's a top guy very supportive of the channel as well as let's talk games i don't know where he finds the time uh but he's he's always leaving comments <clears throat> excuse me and watching the videos and week to week he's uh he says his sundays are packed with um chunk cast and let's talk games cast with his with his coffee or lunch or whatever <laughs> so bless him bless him indeed so he asks a question here righty bro you are now the director of the up and coming next justice league movie what's your main character choices from the justice league you'd have in it and who would be your actors to play um play them I, I assume doesn't have to be previous actors who have right well I'm probably going to disappoint you with this answer <laughs> maybe but it's an easy out and i want the main seven lineup you know superman wonder woman batman green lantern flash and i think there's argument to be said with um martian manhunter and there's some kind of you know oh, aquaman's in there of course but martian manhunter and cyborg seem to kind of rotate out depending on what the continuity is at the time so either all or just all of them <laughs> that would be my my roster but the justice league animated uh or justice league unlimited that show was fantastic but the main justice league cartoon show that was around for two seasons before they went into the unlimited version of the show had like um john stewart green lantern and um hawk girl in there to th you know mix it up a little bit so that was cool it's a pretty iconic um lineup for a lot of people it wasn't just the standard tried and true that we all know and love <clears throat> but either one of those rosters would be it for me like they're just the main seven the big seven everybody knows like they're the pillars of dc heroes why would you go anywhere else but whatever <laughs> that's an argument for another day but it just depends man like new 52 i dug that roster it had cyborg in it i just felt it was a bit more of the times i guess and master man hunter has been a founding member for decades and uh yeah he's an awesome character too so i'm not gonna say no either way as far as actors go my god like warner brothers uh, like Zack snyder and his team have cast them perfectly like i can't even think off the top of my head of who i would cast or change from what we've got going already even like shazam shazam was in justice league in some continuities as well uh, in the cartoons movies animated movies he's a member of the justice league replacing uh who's he replacing can't remember aquaman in those in those movies and that works out really well too another powerhouse on the team but yeah actors you've got me man i i want my my cavill i want my godot i want my momoa you know i want all of them ezra miller i can take or miss but um ray fisher i thought he was a good cyborg 
Ben Affleck, of course, is the best Batman. Like, th I can't think of anyone else <laughs> that I would choose in those roles. And I've been trying to as I've been giving myself time to think here. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, I, I can't give you any kind of more specific answers on that. But first off, let's just, n let's just get the Snyder Cut <laughs> first, right? And uh, let's see if that's good. And maybe we'll get a sequel. If they do reboot it, it'll be like 15 years from now i don't i don't think they'll take another shot at it anytime soon because we all know it, what's happened there the massive stuff up but yeah so answered your question hopefully my answer is sufficient for you nice cool well, let's just move along back in the dc topics superman lois now i just had lunch so i'm a bit gassy if i burp I will not forgive myself. Who am I kidding? I don't really care. Superman and Lois, the TV show. I watched that this week. And um, yeah, thanks. Round of applause. Yep, no worries. <laughs> well done, Chunt. You actually watched something on TV. Now, I had to watch this on my computer because Australia doesn't have an easy way to watch all of these TV shows that America gets in other places in the world. Like the CW shows they're on some random I, I don't even know what channel they're on fox 8 or something on in australia and that's not free to air that's that's cable tv and i refuse to pay that cable like the package is here foxtel has a monopoly for no for anyone that doesn't know foxtel has the monopoly here on you know cable or uh services or whatever tv here in australia and their prices and their packaging is just ridiculous you can't just you have to buy multiple packages that have stuff you don't want in them just to get one channel you know it's really dumb i hate it I've, i haven't paid for it for ages anyway so that's where this show is on as far as i understand but fox still have a new streaming service which i mentioned last week called binge and they're getting the snyder cut right zack snyder's justice league and uh this show was on it now they haven't promoted it at all i only found out the day before this show was to air in australia or become available in australia that it was on i just did a google search or a bing search because i use bing not entitled at all um fuck google uh yeah so i did a quick search on where i can watch this show in australia and i found some articles saying it's coming to binge and i went to their twitter feed and i was like well they're not even promoting it what's going on what the hell so i did i signed up the, the week before because they announced the Snyder Cut was coming on to binge as well so I subscribed and you get a 14 day trial and all that stuff anyway so I sign in and um to Twitter I'm like so I asked them just directly I was like are you, are you getting this show and they're like yeah it's coming up and I was like well shit <laughs> you haven't been promoting it at all anyway so I watched it and it was excellent um I, I thought I don't know what the budget is but my god it's a, a far cry uh, ahead of what the usual cw dc show budget is where those are like obviously kind of made on very 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 little but this show looks amazing it looks like a um it's a high budget tv show it's got that hbo money in it but it's not like you know full featured full feature movie cinema experience but i mean the stuff you can get away with these days is amazing as far as um special effects and cgi and stuff like i i imagine it's not as expensive to do what you need to do in a superman show these days but just the cinematography alone like the color grading the tone of the show everything about it was like damn this is a step above again on those cw shows where it's just full of like cheese and corn and um just crap like it's just fluff tv and uh yeah, those shows have their moments and some cool points but for the rest of it, it's kind of missable it's my opinion but i do recommend you checking this show out the, f the first episode is an hour and they establish a lot within that hour even the first five minutes tells you so much about the history of superman uh where he comes from what his purpose is what his life has been like and you know they don't waste too much time in the origin and then you get caught right up to modern day what he's doing with his kids and like just giving you a a look into his world <laughs> as being superman by day but also trying to be a father at night and a husband all that kind of stuff so they're juggling this dynamic where thankfully he has he has an understanding wife which i i went going into the show thinking how are they going to do this because the climate today not to get too like social social politics on you but it's worth mentioning 
just lately with a lot of the tv shows and movies that you see even on the cw shows like there's no there's no like basic dynamic like with the old traditional dynamics we have the wife and the husband two kids the house you know uh, an actual family the unit that's together <laughs> you know that's normal or traditional so i was like wow this is quite refreshing i expected them to just turn it on their head because current year you know <laughs> current modern day circumstances where broken homes and you know you're juggling kids between different parents and blah 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 but they they've he held true to the the, the standard of what superman is in his history which i was really happy about so uh but now he's got two kids which was new in the comics he's only recently had one in the last handful of years jonathan kent who there is a jonathan kent in this show but he's joined by another brother jordan which is new uh, i didn't expect that i wasn't sure who that kid was or who was which in the trailers and it turns out they're both his or both theirs uh, you got one who's the you know the athletic jock type but he's you know a good-hearted kid and you've got the other one who's dealing with stuff like he's got he's got some mental issues um social anxiety kind of problems and really internalizes things and withdrawn so the yin and yang kind of thing and um some stuff happens in this, in this where i didn't expect they they do uh, subvert expectations somewhat at the end with a reveal of um what's happening in their family dynamic which i thought was cool it was a good little twist and i'm interesting i think that would be more interesting than what they were setting up or what i thought they were setting up for uh so yeah they, they get a lot accomplished in an hour i don't want to spoil too much stuff but it does set up a, a season's worth of of things <laughs> in this one episode and um the, the special effects are great like i i thought i was watching a movie like a a straight to tv movie but with a budget and it looked right great like it, it evokes uh man of steel so much and other like key shots that i recognize like there's a superman returns like nearly shot for shot when he's you know i don't know if you've seen superman returns or he's lifting the island out of the out of the ocean uh to remove the cancer so to speak from earth well there's a shot for shot where he starts he freezes the ocean nearby a, a nuclear plant and uh picks it up out of the water from below and, and is looks like he's struggling with it so i i don't know if they're trying to like give us a gauge on how powerful he is but i mean no superman wouldn't struggle with the bat uh, with this what he's doing okay but anyway but uh, just the shots that they were using of him carrying up this large chunk of something out of the in, into the sky like I, I felt very superman returns vibes on some of those shots um some of the uh he does the whole planet you know, fly above the planet in space kind of twirl that's a traditional shot and that's in man of steel the suit itself is in man like it looks like man of steel <laughs> let's let's get real here like it's got the um the chain mail type of costume the the s looks like it's printed on it looks weird i, I don't really like the s on the on the suit though uh i'm used to these days where it's kind of raised off in its own its own kind of plaque shield on the chest but it looks a bit cheap like it's just printed on otherwise yeah the suit just hardcore is a henry cavill suit so it's good to see i guess that that's the kind of familiarity that they want to put out there like it's still tied to kind of henry cavill's superman or that look so to speak like in the zeitgeist of people's minds of who the modern day superman is so it's good to see they're continuing with that but yeah a lot of the flying shots and the, the battle where he fights someone you know through the skies and in space and stuff and that, that's pretty awesome we don't get to see the fortress of solitude but it's mentioned uh, i'm not going to say who the bad guy is because it's a pretty significant reveal at the end and it raises some questions as like how what what's happening there um the small town smallville stuff it's a bit um they do juxtapose how smallville was when he was growing up to what it is now and it's like polar opposites <laughs> Uh, there's some real like bad stuff happening probably at a corporate level that makes smallville not the place it used to be but look overall i'm trying to dance around a lot of the spoilers but kind of give my thoughts on the show highly recommend checking it out at least even if you're not a superman fan just out of curiosity to kind of see what they're doing i mean this modern day take might be for you uh because i'm about to talk about another one <laughs> that uh, i do have some um strong opinions on uh but yeah tyler hicklin i think he, he, how you say his last name he does a serviceable job uh, serviceable job as his own kind of superman 
not my favorite but he, he's very earnest and uh kind of a calm quiet superman he's not he's not like all the other ones where he, he doesn't just own the space and he doesn't walk around and you, and you just go holy crap <laughs> that's that superman like when you first see him in his full suit get up going to the nuclear plant i kind of like laughed a little bit <laughs> you know because it's just an obvious padded suit you know and uh, his head looks so small in it and his neck looks so small in it but it does i just don't believe that he's that size under that suit anyway whatever uh the lois i can't i can't remember her name but um she was pretty good she's pretty standard lois but um actually cares <laughs> you know some lois is uh, depicted as like real harsh you know badass you know always a journalist always in work mode uh in the comics she's not she's a very loving person in, in the comics and uh, that's good that they're kind of bringing some of that in even amy adams um lois i really liked because uh her lois is still work oriented but with a tender touch uh in there so there's a lot to like here there really is and, and my screensaver just turned on <laughs> while i was talking clearly i've been talking about this way too long uh good like 10 minutes now but um yeah there's a lot to talk about there without spoiling too much so i hope that i gave some kind of enough info that it might sound interesting to you i didn't want to come in here and go this happened this happened this happened this happened so you didn't have to watch it you know i, want, I don't want to be that guy i want people to watch things and experience things for myself so go for it if that's your thing i don't know where you're going to see it in australia if you've got fox 8 or binge that's your option otherwise you can try the cw app but i tried that it doesn't work too well here at least when i tested it i probably need a vpn or something but i really can't be asked doing any of that crap anyway yep that's done superman lois done talking about it next more superman i did say this is going to be very superman centric i mean i should be happy there's a lot of superman stuff happening when there's been long periods of time where there was none but it's kind of bittersweet because of everything that's happening with Henry Cavill's Superman that's up in there that nobody knows what's going on. Nobody, no one can say one way or another. He says he's still interested and his cape is in the closet still, ready to keep going. He's got many stories to tell. But then you've got Warner Brothers doing this. This. Come on, mouse. Go over there. This. Superman reboot in the works. <laughs> that's Warner Brothers with ta I think that's how you say, name, say his name. Coates writing and jj abrams producing um yeah so there, there, there's a few ways you can go with this the flash movie that's coming out is opening up the gates to the multiverse right okay just stick with me here dc fandom that happened late last year all the warner brothers execs came on talked about dc and explained the multiverse and what the flash is going to do and it just means that everything is canon like everything is warranted any iteration of batman superman blah 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 it's all real like they all exist and i think this might be one of those things that they're trying to do with the multiverse getting away with doing another superman so initially i was like okay what the hell <laughs> um for those of you who don't know who the writer is he he made his mark writing black panther and uh that's what got kevin feige interested in uh black panther and kind of getting him on board to help with that movie but um and there's a lot to read here i'm not going to start reading an article to you i'm trying to summarize some of the details that's been coming out um since this was announced from what i've heard and read about this guy he uh he's very political and he's very um i don't want to say he's racist but some of the comments he's made and some of the stuff that he's written and just people that have spoken out about him he has a very kind of black centric take which you know he's a black guy cool whatever he wrote black panther cool awesome yeah that's cool i'm not saying it's bad that he's writing superman but uh, other articles and this one have gone into saying that they want to reboot superman with the black superman which is not unprecedented because they do exist uh exhibit a this is val zod from earth 2 so while i was talking about 
the multiverse and what this opens up this opens the door up for Valzod to come in which I think is probably the most logical one to choose uh, because he's the most recently well known version of a black Superman and he's pretty powerful all the same all the same stuff he's just he's Superman but he's black cool and um, that comic book Earth 2 Justice League was pretty awesome the Green Lantern over there was gay all that kind of stuff like it was just like the diverse the diverse Justice League of Earth 2 like everyone is kind of different or like um, a gender bent or a, um, a race bent kind of equivalent of the one in Prime Earth continuity and um, you can tell I'm trying to be very careful <laughs> on what I'm saying here anyway Warner Brothers has had a lot of uh, controversy recently with um, abuse on sets with multiple different experiences um, with people speaking out you know, one being Ray Fisher of Cyborg fame from Justice League having like racist remarks from people on staff and um, Joss Whedon's take on Justice League removed every person of color from the movie like there's uh, the Adam is in there who is an Asian Cyborg is black Iris West which is uh, Flash's girlfriend the B is black so all these other characters that were not white <laughs> that were removed from the movie so it's just optics like I don't know if that was on purpose but I mean come on how many times are you doing that in one movie anyway regardless Warner Brothers I think are trying to make up some ground here because there's a race to diversify that's happening on now like a race to beat the clock on who can be the most diverse so Marvel are always beating Warner Brothers to the punch on a lot of stuff you know the first team up uh getting solo movies out the door the multiverse is about to happen like all that kind of stuff like they're always kind of you know they're getting their tv shows all happening now they seem to be always one step ahead and Warner brothers is just so slow they take forever <laughs> you know to get anything happening it's so annoying and frustrating as a fan just to see like it's awesome happy for everyone that's a marvel fan i'm really am um, Chris Evans as Captain America is one of life's joys <laughs> you know I love that shit and the, the whole Captain America story in, in the MCU is my favorite so I'll accept that gift it's awesome and I'm keen to see whatever's going to happen but I want Warner Brothers to get their finger out but um, who knows what's going to happen now you've got a different Batman happening and now you're potentially going to have a new Superman happening so what that what does that mean right what does that mean for Henry Cavill J.J. Abrams had a script uh, back in the day who was picking out Superman and, and Henry Cavill was in the shortlist. I think he was, he, was, he was going to be or he was the second one in line to be the Superman for that movie. So it's, this isn't his first runaround. I think it was the same for Superman Returns. He was in the run-up, but he was too young or something at the time. Or I can't remember exactly, but same with James Bond, Casino Royale. He was second behind Daniel Craig, but he was too young to pull off that kind of a bond that they were going for so henry cavill's always had this thing where he's like almost 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 and now he's superman and it's been handled so poorly by the studio meddling that he hasn't gotten the run that he's wanted so i understand his frustration there and now they're doing this where they're going all right we're going to reboot superman and we're going to just do a totally different one and um, see what happens so michael b jordan had tried to push this um when he first came into being with contracts with Warner Brothers, he had a pitch as for a Black Superman script, and you might have heard that a while back. Uh, so, you know, that never eventuated, but now this is happening. And a lot has happened since with the Zack Snyder movies, HBO Max, and all that. So what's, what's going to happen here? Like, are we going to have the Snyderverse and Henry Cavill Superman exist further on HBO Max only, like on streaming only, and then Warner Brothers will try these experimental movies like on the cinema or what like where are they going to stream that like i, I there's a there's a place for everything i believe you know there's just there's enough room for everything but my problem is if they're replacing henry cavill for this i don't agree with that um not because of the race thing but because henry cavill is still in the mindset of the general public as the current superman he's well liked as superman everyone that talks about the films whether they like them or not always says oh but that Henry Cavill he makes a great Superman I want to see him in, in the movie that I would like you know that kind of talk whereas I think it's just he's been in masterpiece movies and he's the perfect Superman I want to see more of that 
you know, I'm totally on board with them doing more, but the general consensus is Henry Cavill is a good Superman. So you've got this cachet in the mindset of the general public and moviegoers and fans of this Henry Cavill doing it for, what, three movies now? And uh, he still hasn't had a good run. He has, does, hasn't had his own sequel movie yet. Uh, if you discount BVS, which technically it is a sequel to Man of Steel. But anyway, I, I am interested to see what happens here. This movie sounds like it's a long way away. There's no one attached to it. No actors attached to it. No director really attached to it. It's just like a writer and a producer for J.J. Abrams. So this is going to be a long way away, but I thought it was interesting to pick up because of the next topic as well. And carrying on from last week's topic with Supergirl, where there's a lot of movements happening here to bring in more un or relatively unknown fan favorites to... Well, unknown characters to the general but fan favorites to the rest of us whereas supergirl which i'll just i'll just jump right in to the third topic eh? because it kind of just rolls into that anyway what do you think about um, having a black superman just because it's different or do you know who val yeah, val zod is or val Drod, whatever the hell his name is um he's, pr he's a pretty awesome character if you've read the earth 2 storyline uh he does make a good like competent superman in that world and um he essentially takes over basically when the actual justice league are all destroyed and um anyway it's a long story i'm not gonna start ranting into it but look into him if, if that interests you um i do hope that maybe they'll just take there is a, a black superman that already exists in mainline dc called icon you know he's from another planet crash lands on earth it's the same similar kind of origin but he's legitimately like a proper black superman his own character and i've always said about like diversifying for diversity's sake doesn't work i don't agree with it there's plenty of characters in dc's roster that they can pluck from if that's what they're trying to do rather than just trying to just rebrand what everybody knows into something else i just it's just messy and confuses things but whatever comic books i've dealt with it for years and i don't have a problem with it i'm just concerned at how the general public might take it anyway enough of that enough of that let's talk about some more diverse casting because <laughs> diversity is the uh the favorite thing lately so we've got blue beetle i'm so excited about this blue beetle is happening he's been one of my favorite dc characters in recent memory for the last you know 10 years or whatever he's such a good character and i can't believe he's not more popular than he already is so we've got uh, I'm going to butcher this guy's name. Angel Manuel Soto to direct Blue Beetle. DC Films' first Latino superhero. So this is what I'm saying. There's a race to diversify happening here. Like, you've got Black Panther. So Marvel's already done the black superhero thing. But there's been no, like, Latino one. So who can we get <laughs> to, to do the first Latino super movie? Uh, whatever. Besides the fact that Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes is an awesome character very very cool character mightily excited to, to see what happens here about this one again there's not much more really to say about um what this is it's just kind of like this is happening and he's the director that's attached there's um there's no what no actor is currently attached to it i just had a look through earlier and there's no kind of update as to what's happening um you know who, wh how far are they going to go with this is this just hbo max only or are we going to get a cinematic release i do think this is only going to be hbo max but i'm fine with that if if they did what they did with superman and lois and they can continue the budget means that is required for a blue beetle because um uh, he he's a bit of a transformer type character you know that's his costume there and that's you know in in near civilian mode <laughs> well what happens is so for those of you who don't know who blue beetle is and why i say he's a bit of a the dc spider-man so to speak not that he not that he gets bitten by a spider and web slings around nothing like that but you know he's in school high school uh, he, uh this little space like scarab type weapon device finds its way to earth and he uncovers it and it attaches him attaches itself to his spine and he wakes up and he's got a voice in his head and it's the computer inside the scarab which is a computer <laughs> it's like a space weapon uh, starts talking to him and, and starts fighting for fighting for control anyway so he gets the full suit on which is the whole blue beetle suit um 
it, it is a whole space lineage on what the story is behind this i don't want to ruin too much for you but the comic line i hope they do pick up from if this is the movie that they're doing is not the rebirth run where they rebooted dc comics and started making blue beetle more of like a, a magic based hero where the scarab is um tied to uh some kind of like black adam's history and, and dr fate which they might do because black adam movie is coming out and dr fate is apparently going to be in that so if they are going to tie this in i am a little worried that's what they're going to do because that comic run wasn't too good and the fact that you've got this like tech based armor based suit that's magic based I, it just didn't make sense to me whereas the run before it the new 52 run of, of blue beetle was fantastic i really really dug it and they were really going for the dc spider-man angle on that because you had like eventually someone that he knows gets an evil scarab version you know and they have like a spider-man venom type relationship happening combat so, you know that co the whole scenario really, i thought it was cool man and they end up going into space to a planet called the reach which is where all these bugs come from you know and they they take over certain planets and implant all these bug things on their back like what happened to him and that's how they build their armies up but the difference is his is damaged that when when it was coming to earth it got attacked by a green lantern because it was being chased by a green lantern and it was shot and damaged and went off course and through a, a portal and ended up on earth and the green lantern lost track of it so you know centuries go past and it eventually finds its way to high mate so i really want to see if that's what they're going to do because that could easily tie in green lanterns as well because it's a hbo max green lantern show being developed as well it'd be a good way to tie it all in man like i blue beetle has been this this secret that i've had like everybody i ask about no, nobody knows what he is he's made his fame on like young justice the cartoon show uh brave and the bold is a bit of a more comedic one there but in justice 2 he's in that that fighting game so he's been in the kind of the mindset in the front and center of warner brothers kind of going we want these characters put out there and it, he has been and uh you know further along as we as time rolls on he's getting more familiar with people which i want to see i want to see a movie or a series like i think he lends so well to being this like awesome like super suit character like not really like power rangers but and not definitely not like big bad beetleborgs <laughs> if if you know what that is but like techno man you know or techo man depending on where you're from something like that where you get this massive awesome like power powerful super suit like guyver you know all these other ones that, that are like this but dc's got one and it's blue beetle like he can turn his hands and arms and whatever uh he's what what do you call him his, his limbs or whatever that come out of his back like they all turn into weapons and shit. he convert his arms into blades or weapons or cannons and um uh, he's just oh, he's very very cool anyway i'm just excited i've been going on a rant i'm just excited that this is actually happening because i've said a number of times in the past like i wish blue beetle was more popular than he is because i would love a video game i would love like a proper statue or like a hot toys or something of him you know that kind of stuff um just I, that's kind of why i added it to this like i don't have a lot to talk about with the fact that the movie's coming but i wanted to shine a light on it for those people who actually end up do sticking around to watch to the end of this show that i'm doing that you know a handful of people actually give a shit about <laughs> anyway uh i'm not gonna rant on too much more i left that image on screen so you can remember who blue beetle is if blue beetle is tell me if you do know who he is before this show tell me does this sound interesting to you i would be very interested to know myself because i want to know people know that he exists <laughs> i've got a, a number of the number ones issues that have come out over time i've gone back and you know retroactively chased them up uh, in, in the last few years because I, I like the character so maybe those will shoot up in price <laughs> no not that i'd ever sell them but anyway enough about that cool uh, that's done i think uh, a bit of a short one today i didn't want to spend too much time so there hasn't been a lot of news that i really want to go into this week so i've just picked out some nuggets that i kind of wanted to talk about just casually nothing too meaty no kind of real articles to bore your brains out that i'm going to read constantly on but just some interesting topics here and 
I chose these ones in particular because they're all about diversity, like diverse characters and uh, how they can work. Like Blue Beetle is his own Blue Beetle, separate from the old like Golden Age or Silver Age Blue Beetle, Ted Cord. When they rebooted that whole thing, Ted Cord became like this retired version of Blue Beetle and uh, he just took up the name. The, the Blue Beetle Scarab's name is something else entirely, not just Blue Beetle, but they end up having a relationship and finding each other and he takes on the mantle of Blue Beetle. So he is a new character. It's not like he's just... They've just rebooted him and put it in another thing. Like There's a story reason as to why he's Blue Beetle there. It's not like they just try to reboot a whole storyline or a movie line and put another person of color in there instead. Now, that's where I have the problem with. It's like, I would rather new characters like this or Icon, you know, for argument's sake. And the whole, like, there's a Milestone comics that are coming back into DC, which is like all black characters. It's a whole black comic book character line. And that was that was a big deal in DC fandom when they mentioned that. And that's awesome to see because they've got like Static Shock and all that stuff that's coming back into the continuity. And there's plans for movies for them as well. So it's all happening, and that's fine. Need I say, like, I'm not having a problem with any of that. <laughs> it's awesome to see. You know, I, I want more of these characters to come out. I want the Green Lantern to be Jon Stewart, you know, if he's in the, the Green Lantern show or in the movie as a cameo or something, who knows? Like, Jon Stewart is Green Lantern for so many people out there uh, through the, the cartoon, the Justice League show that uh, popularized him as Green Lantern. And he's a very cool character. My character, my Green Lantern is um, Kyle Rayner uh, from the 90s. You know, he's a bit of a comic artist and comic book artist. And you know, I kind of relate to that guy. And Hal Jordan, he's just the, he's the G. But um, that's the thing. Like Green Lanterns can be many different people. And uh, anyway, I'm ranting on now. I was just about to wrap up the show. <laughs> and I had another another idea that I wanted to talk about. So, uh, you know, tell, tell me what you think below of all this kind of stuff. Like the Supergirl thing from another um, Earth as well. And she's a Latina. And whether she's going to have blonde hair or not who knows um is she going to interact with henry cavill superman or is she going to interact with this new you know, val zod superman from earth 2 where which earth is jaime reyes from is he in the mainline continuity like, i guarantee he's not in part of the snyderverse you know warner brothers won't want to do that they want to separate themselves from that completely so anyway look it's a lot of dc happening and i'm happy about it i'm not complaining about any of this it's a lot happening i just wish that they had the same steamroll effect that marvel had you know like marvel just they they keep pumping them out yeah, even though i don't like all of it and wonder vision i think is very underrated underrated sorry overrated show but man the, the people are watching it people keep coming back i wish there was a dc line for all this stuff but there's just too many fingers in the pots you know it's never going to happen so i'm just going to take what i can get and mention my gripes where they happen <laughs> so yeah anyway uh, if anyone stuck around to the end, end of this one i know it was a bit loose and i just wanted to keep it casual today so thank you for putting up with me uh number 30 30 of these already i've had a bit of a long break in between so that probably would have done more but um here we are anyway hopefully next week there's more to talk about that actually has more meat to it uh, i do like kind of getting in depth with some conversations here and in the comments below whoever actually leaves comments and anyway i'll see you next week for episode 31 of chunkcast and uh, we'll see how we go and see what happens and anyway between now and then look after yourself and be careful out there and uh, don't be stupid you know care about people that you care about and don't be bastards to everybody else but until then and may the power protect you till all are one bumblebee tuna Yes, I actually have the soundbite today. I came prepared, at least for that. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just ruined the outro now. So, I'm just going to go. Like, comment, subscribe.